Looks like I got my measurements something like. We'll take some laminate flow up. And scribe these back. Get a batten around the wall. So I've packed that level and I've left the doors on because then I can look at the gaps and see how I'm doing. See if anything's twisted out of plumb or whatever. I've sent my scribers to that distance there because I want the inside of this flush with the inside of this inside of the alcoves. So now, oh well that's close. Decorate this cork on that one. I'll do a scribe down there and scribe that one in. I want to do this with two hands. Both hands. So now I'm going to cut that out with jigsaw. We're a fraction short there. This one I normally make 10mm wider, but I forgot on this one. I'll cut that, it'll slide that way, and I can do the same here. I've had to just take a little bit out there to get it in for the floor, but I'll do the same there. Get it plumb. Right, I'm a fraction short here, but I'm going to stick at that because that's quite a nice scribed and there's not much of a gap down there. So I'll get that plumb there and scribe the bottom. The wall's pretty plumb. If the wall wasn't plumb, I'd be tempted to just go parallel off the wall, otherwise, you end up with a sliver and it looks weird. But they're both pretty plumb, so plumb it. And I'll scrape the bottom like I did before. That's pretty straight and it's plumb. There you go, and it's plumb. So I'm going to leave that. Now, what I need to do level around, put a baton on. Right, I've got a level line around just off the top of here. What I'll do is cut a baton that way, then I'll cut two this distance up to here and that should make that same distance as that and I put this one on first and then put that one up to it because it's line of sight that one if you put these ones in first and then that butts up and they don't they don't meet you see it I don't think it makes that much difference inside cupboard but sometimes it's line of sight it's how you how you view it anyway cut these buttons get them screwed on
think this wall's been dot and dabbed, so four inch screws on this one. Nelly in there. Fit two buttons on, same distance. And I left it just a fraction short so that I can push that back to the wall. I don't want that sticking out too far and interfering. I prefer to have a little gap. And I was aiming for that to be flush with that, but to pack it out just a little bit doesn't matter. That joint will be tight. And that one's okay. And all the time that I was packing and screwing this in, I was watching this gap, making sure that they were they were running through a level and uh, they don't look bad. I've got a fix in there. I've got a screw in there. I might put another one next to it. I can get a fix in down on that leg there at the bottom. There's going to be a base in here so that'll secure that properly and then there's going to be a middle shelf which will fix on a little bit like this does so that leg should be alright cork it up and then that leg's loose so when I take the clamps off if those doors are you know see how one's sticking out a little bit there what I can do Knock that leg in a bit, or out of it. See the flush now. But I need to release them. Let them swing, and then I'll fit that. I'm going to do that one first, after I've had a cup. Hot day, I can't get the windows open. I can't find the key. But anyway, this one's a little tricky. I'm working with the laminate here, look. But what I've done, I've stood it up, scribed it as close as I can, so that that distance is the same distance as that. It's five mil in it, so that one went in a bit more than five mil. But now I've got it pretty much where it's going to be. Sit that on, draw a line, cut the laminate back. Laminate's staying for now. They're going to change it at a later date, but I've got to leave it somewhat like neat. And once I've cut that back, I'll be able to drop this down onto the floor and scribe it properly. Right now I'll pack it level, get it level, check these, check these gaps and I can scrub it back to the wall properly now. Right so that's in, it's quite a good fit there, it's level, gaps are okay but I can pull this frame, you know, this way and that way a little bit. That's quite a good fit down there, it will be. Keeps wanting to fall over, so same again. Get a button around the top, like I did that one over there. Right, same as before. Button around, just put a screw in there. And because this is like double sided, I can't pull and push those too much, but at the moment, it's not looking too bad. It's sticking out a bit, both of them. 
Maybe pull that top in a bit, maybe. I don't think these were straight. Uh, get some tops cut. What I want to do today is get tops on and all these shelves so they're dry for tomorrow to sand off and then I'll concentrate on the shelves tomorrow and the bases inside. Yeah, that bows out just a little bit. I'll bit pull that back once I get the top on. And maybe push the bottom one out. Dodgy, dodgy driveway. Just about legs are good. Right, cut the top to pretty much exactly the right size. I'm lucky this back wall is it's pretty straight, or within tweaking distance anyway. Let's put it over. So I'm going to do mark that, and I'm going to cut this to that nose in there. It's only coming over about 15 mil, so I'll cut that. So that distance there is that distance that I want it to overhang. So I've sent my scribers to that. I'll draw that in. And I'll cut that off. So I've just cut that. And for all of this, including the scribes, I'm using one of these stiff blades. I think I need a new one. I've cut that. And that distance from there to the edge of the plaster work here I've marked that on the front of here it's there I'll get this in so I've got it back in that's my pencil line set my compass to that I'll scribe that and cut that off I've given it just a couple of mil. I don't want it tight, I want it to just drop in. I don't mind if there's a few millimetres all the way around. Like I say, there's a couple of mil, don't mind. Lost it a little bit on this one, but it's nearly there. It's near enough there. Got 20 mil there. About 23, 24 across there. So to close that little gap up, I'm just going to do that. I'll close that up. I'll close that up. I'll get a plane on that. Alright, so there you go. Close that up. That's parallel. Like I say, I lost, lost sight of my line a little bit there. Don't matter. Do that one. That one's a little trickier. So this one, same again. The back wall is pretty straight. So I've cut it just a few mil wider than it needs to be. And this, this bit here, and that bit there, a flush. You know, the same distance off here, pretty much. So that measurement between there and there is that measurement between there and there. I made these equal. So I've stood it in that way. I've got wire in my way down there. So I want this one to be lay, leaning as low as possible. And the wall's pretty straight. Normally you'd push it hard back against the wall, but I've got the gap there, very similar to there. And it's touching in the middle. So, for that mark, set my compass to that. I'll cut that one. Then when I come to do that one, because I've notched that out, it'll sit down a bit lower than this one does. So that one's cut. I'm not doing me backwards jigger thing. I get like a little curl of curl that it cuts, I'll show you. So I can't see my line so much. And here you see, it's a bit awkward. Don't know if I'm going to get my scribers in there. So I 
I'm going to have to do what I can. I need to lift this. Uh, I can't really get in, so I'm just going to join that dot to that dot. Not too bad actually. A little gap there, but see it under there. But I've got a bit more than I want here. 26, 27 mil. 26, 27. Just now anyway. So I'll set my scribers to like five mil and run it along the back there. Not forgetting to do these as well. And up there. And I'll do under here as well. I'll cut that off. It should all slide back. Oh. Not a bad gap. It's slightly out here. I could take a fraction more off there. But I'm not gonna. Shelves now. There's different ways of making these. I could put a batten around like that. Put a straight edge across. And work out the distances if that back was bowed. Or I could just put a batten around put a bottom board in, lay some timbers around and fix the front button. But these are pretty straight so I'm going to make a three-legged piece with these buttons already fixed on, screw it in place, then fix the front one. So these are my buttons that are going to go against the wall. There's going to be another one on the front, so two of those plus my front. Shells are 14 inch deep. So 14 inch there gives me about 305, three shells, one, two, three, four cross pieces, three fours of 12. So I'm going to set up a stop on my saw here. So I can just measure off that now. I've just cut one on the stop, check your first one, make sure it's right, it is. Right, I just happened to have a nice boarding pan, give me something flat to work on. I've marked them equally, like I was saying I'm trying to keep the plain side up. See, and I'm just going to screw them, just put a screw in the face here on each one. 40 mil fives. Two more. And they're going to go on the wall like that. One little tip that you might see me doing. I use these fingers for my trigger fingers. Point your finger down where you're going to go. Helps you, you know, guide it. Same on a saw. If you're doing cutting with a saw. Point, point your finger down the blade. Drilling, any of it. So I've drilled it just like I did at the pattern below. I'll hold it up to my level line, hit these screws, mark the wall, 
drill it and put three on this side and in each side sod slaw says some of those won't be good but because they're inside the box I can just re-drill them so like that I'll put another one across the front here I'm going to do the others though before that might just get in my way so they are on like that most of the screws went in quite well what I can do now is measure across there right that's it for today anyway it's toasty warm I'll get some boards on them tomorrow